Sarada Uchiha versus the 5 Kage Summit. The title is pretty self-explanatory here, but to explain it just in case it's unclear, we will be taking Sarada Uchiha and throwing her in Sasuke's place during the 5 Kage Summit. This time though, she won't have any help like Sasuke had, so that means no Obito and White Zetsu, and no Team Taka as in Sugetsu, Karin, and Jugo. This isn't going to be an explaining what will happen in a story way, kind of like a Dragon Ball what if, but instead looking at it from a strength and scaling perspective of can she clear the summit or perform as as good as or even better than Sasuke did during that time. Hopefully that makes sense and you all understand it. One last thing to get out of the way is I'll be using current Sarda so her time skip slash 2 blue vortex self as she's very hyped up right now and she is the same age currently as Sasuke was in Shippuden so it's a nice fair comparison. And I'll mainly be using manga canon as that's my preferred way to consume both series so there may be some anime only things from Boruto that give credence or strength or downfalls that I'm unaware of but I'll do my best with what anime knowledge I have but ultimately won't have it have a main say in my scaling or arguments because of the stigma around Borto's anime. Let's begin. Let's start with how strong Sarda is as she's the challenger in this scenario and the one with the least amount of info on her for how strong she is, but thankfully with her having her first on-screen fight and showing of strength in the newest chapter of 2 Blue Vortex, we get a pretty good general idea on her overall power. But quickly I'll tell you her current abilities and jutsus that we know. The biggest and most obvious one here is her Mangekyo Sharingan she unlocked in chapter 80 after the huge plot twist from Ida, but as of now we aren't aware of what her actual MS abilities are, so we're kind of in a modern situation where his arsenal isn't fully fleshed out, but that's okay for now, it's not really needed for this video. She knows the shuriken jutsu, she has affinity for fire release as she's an Uchiha, so she has fireball jutsu. She also has lightning release and can use Chidori from being taught by her father, as well as being able to infuse shuriken with lightning chakra to knock back opponents and possibly stun them. She also has incredible chakra control like her mother, so she's able to infuse specific parts of her body with chakra to enhance movements or techniques, just like how Sakura is able to to and that's how she has her monstrous strength. And to top it off, she has Genjutsu of sorts. While never shown in action in the manga, it's stated that she has it in the Ninja Encyclopedia entries and the physical Borto volumes. I know if you go into the anime, she has more confirmed techniques like wind release and such, but like I said before, I'd like to keep this as true to the manga as possible. In terms of her actual strength and how strong she is, depending on how high you want to push the scaling and interpretations, she can get pretty nuts, but I'm actually going to not use the highest interpretations for her and more of her modest scaling. I to make it more even so keep that in mind. To get a little into how strong she is before the time skip, you could obviously use the statement from Sasuke in the anime, which believe it or not is said to be 100% canon. Kishimoto and the team works very hard to keep the same timeline of stories to be unison, so this is canon whether you like it or not, but he said that Sarda is far more skilled than he was at her age, which if you do the math or take it as it is, Sarda during part 1 is actually the same age if not a year older than Sasuke was in OG Naruto, so just 3 Tomoe pre time skip Sarda is not just more skilled than Sasuke, far Far more skilled than Sasuke. And keep in mind, at this age, Sasuke had the curse mark and a load of other skills acquired, so that's just an interesting fun thing to note. It doesn't say she's stronger than him, just more skilled, so you can take that as you will. Getting back into the manga stuff, if we look back on chapter 40 to 42 where the Boro fight takes place, a lot of jibber jabber and scuffling happens, but the crucial part here is Sarda with Chidori is able to blitz his core, which all it takes for him to counter that is to weave a hand sign, yet he couldn't even react fast enough to do that. And Boro is honestly pretty hyped up from statements mostly. There's actually a lot of insane ones for him, but I'm not going to sit here and argue Boro is above Delta or Code like what's implied. The last part one thing for Sarda I want to bring up is her MS and what that means for her strength, because a lot of you people blindly hate or hold these weird biases and fail to understand just how strong she can get with just the MS. Firstly, just because Sasuke's MS brought him to a certain tier doesn't mean that's the limit or cap Sarda can reach just by having the MS. This is the same with every amp, it all goes off your base stats or base strength and power. The same goes for Hima, who is confirmed to have Kurma and in turn should be able to use KCM, but that doesn't mean she can't get stronger than Naruto could with KCM when we know from statements in the manga and just logic that she has greater potential than him. A good way to look at this is with the 8 gates. We see the guy being able to compete with the likes of Jubi Madara because of them, but that doesn't mean everyone who has the 8 gates can achieve those heights because let's look at his dad, who when he used the 8 gates couldn't even kill all of the 7 swordsmen, who by the way, when revived with Edo Tensei, lost to Kakashi, so there's clearly a huge skill discrepancy between the 
two users of the jutsu. You could also look at this in the reverse way as well, which just because Guy's dad was able to kill a few of the swordsmen with the eight gates, that doesn't mean that Guy himself caps out at that level because we know that's not true since we've seen the guy kick Jubidara's chest open. Essentially, if the person has a higher base stat or higher pre-buff strength, if you then add the buff on top, they will get stronger than the person who had the lower base stats. I find it redundant to have to keep repeating this point because I've even made a full video on Sarada's potential, but let me lay it out here a final time really easy. Let's say Sarada's base strength is 100 while Sasuke's is 20 and the MS is a 5 times amp. This means that Sarda is now at 500 strength with the MS while Sasuke is only at 100. Hopefully that makes sense now and we all get it. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at the recent opponent she fought to get a sense of her speed, reaction, strength, all of that. So this is Hidari. We should all know who he is, but if you don't, he's the Shinju of Sasuke. He has Sasuke's chakra, jutsu, and could possibly even feel some sort of residual emotion based off what Matsuri said. The Shinju are basically super amped up claw grimes built from the body of the Tentails Code had possession of and now have their own conscious and desires thanks to to shinjutsu energy or something like that it doesn't matter all you should know is that these guys are tough there's a few ways to gauge where the shinju scale but since we're focused on hidari i'll only look at stuff relevant to him so first off there's a statement from ida who can see everything and saw the shinju fighting firsthand saying they're now out of his league anyway after kawaki said he thought code was controlling them which just puts the shinju blatantly higher than code in terms of power but this could also be referring to them as a collective instead of individually so keep that in mind but going back to the first time we see hidari fighting which is against boruto Hidari teleports beside Borto using the claw marks and swings at him, which does get dodged, then instantly uses a Chidori, which Borto decides to block using a Rasengan. By the way, Ko doesn't react to all of this until Hidari is mid-swing, so keep that in mind. Now fast forward to this newest chapter, we see Hidari teleport right behind a completely off-guard Sarada using the claw marks and tries to hit her with a point-blank Chidori, and she not only reacts to this by dodging, but hits his torso with a Chidori of her own, without the MS activated at all, just with the basic 3 Tomoe. To put this into perspective on how crazy this feat is, it's not only a monumental faster reaction time feat than code displayed, but this also means that with the Chidori amp, she could be much faster than the black chakra rods, which is insane. I'll stop the Sarda glazing because I can keep going on and on, I'll add more context to points if need be by the matchups, but let's just get into the Kage Summit. We should all know what events take place in the Kage Summit, but first up we have the bigger main room with the Rai Kage and his help, then later on Gara and his entourage joins up, but focusing solely on the Rai Kage here, his whole thing is speed and he's the self-proclaimed fastest shinobi alive at the time and he has the lightning cloak which is just very durable we see that sasuke's chidori barely penetrated it but starting with speed from what's been shown sarada is just much quicker when it comes to reaction time and basically everything else speed related there's multiple ways to put it you can either say she's reacted and moved faster than time skip code who easily scales above anything raikage could be highballed to or that she tagged hidari who was able to dodge chakra rods that sasuke struggled to even perceive with his sharingan so speed here is all in sarada's favor when it comes to actually damaging the Raikage though, it's not as clear cut and easy to display as the speed was, but she could and would damage him with Chidori. We've already established that she's faster than him, and a lot of Chidori's strength relies on the thrusting speed of it, so the faster you thrust slash hit the opponent, the stronger the jutsu will hit. If you go back and look at the fight between Sasuke and the Raikage, you can see he didn't have a huge run up, or really that much of a running head start at all, and was able to pierce the cloak. So with reason, you can say, well if you give a faster character like Sarada even the same situation situation, she would do at the minimum enough to get through the cloak and make him bleed, but she would be able to do lethal damage to the Raikage if given any sort of space, which she could get because of the huge speed gap. As for the help of C and Darui, Sarada also has Genjutsu, and we aren't aware of what exactly it is, but we've seen him get deleted by Sharingan Genjutsu already, so it could very well be the same situation, but if not, she's just blitz tears above those characters anyway. Now when Gara comes in, he'll be greeted with the Raikage, who we'll say is out of commission as a nice way to put it, so once again, it would be another 1v1 one situation for Sarda here, unless for some reason after everything I listed, you still think Sarda would struggle or take her time with the Raikage, which is out of character, she doesn't mess around, it's on go for whoever's about it. And the Raikage, even though he is probably the strongest Kage here, still is frankly no match for Sarda, other than the Lightning Cloak, because that could maybe cause an issue, it could be argued. But for Gara, the speed of his sand, both offensively and defensively, isn't impressive, so really the only thing here is if he catches Sarda in a sand burial or sand coffin, because both those would most definitely work 
work against her there's no question but the issue is actually tagging her which could be a possibility with added pressure from tamari with her wind and if you want to throw conqueror in there as well you can but like let's be honest here the dude is buns he's one of the worst characters in the whole series and would probably hinder gara more than not but there could be a case made where teamwork and strategy allows for gara to get a sand coffin or sand burial off on sarda if she's distracted or forced into a bad position although i really don't see that happening in this situation there's far more ways than not sarda gets the win and get outmaneuvered these three and there really isn't any way for these guys to stop a chidori from her which if it hits will instantly kill no question about it moving on to the conference room we got mei mufune onoki and the guards which tally up to a whole lot of pressure all going against one person so there's two ways to look at this we can follow the same timeline of the fights getting individualized or we can stray off what happened and leave it as a complete mosh pit of a battle but i'll answer the first one in depth and then give a cheap answer for the second because it's more fun to talk about individual fights than a straight massacre so first up is mifune which honestly is pretty fodder compared to sarda actually on second thought all of these characters are fodder compared to this woman but mifune is basically prime hanzo level which i don't need abc this out to you guys is not anything impressive compared to these time skip boruto characters and since all he has is a sword it's not even fun to talk about so he just blatantly gets outscaled and has no hacks jutsu may on the other hand was able to melt through sasuke's ribcage susano and was probably going to melt through sasuke himself if he wasn't saved by white zetsu so it's safe to assume she's completely melting sarda if she gets the jutsu off so this one is honestly weird if we take the sarda blitzes may out of the equation may will melt sarda with the acid mist but on the other hand may has shown to be weak and not very agile and fast so yeah she can start to melt sarda but she can also die to chidori basically instantly so at best for may you could say if she acid miss sarda and somehow the jutsu lasts long enough and sarda is trapped in that small hallway long enough that it would melt her down and kill her but may would have died long before that by chidori so it's at best if given certain circumstances a tie for may but she just gets outsped if this is a bloodlusted sarda or just a sarda that wants to end the fight for onoki i've said this before on my other blank versus the kage summit videos and that's the whole enclosed room thing for those who haven't heard me say this before onoki is fighting in the conference room which as tall as you want to say the ceilings are it's an enclosed room with no space for flying up out of the way which is onoki's strongest if not the second strongest part of his arsenal and it's useless because we see sasuke stand on the roof and mifune and others like just all ninja in general are able to jump very high and we even see onoki flying in that room and he's only like barely above head level so there's no flying to escape sarda but he does still have his particle style which is an instant kill we all know that but it's such a telegraph jutsu with how he needs to spend time to form it in his hands then when it's shot it doesn't instantly atomize whatever's in sign it has a downtime large enough for obito to teleport inside and suck both himself and sasuke back out which as fast as kamui is is still a lot of time especially for sarda who is able to react and hit someone who easily dodged attacks adult running on sasuke had troubles perceiving so saying she just gets caught by this jutsu is honestly blasphemous this whole section of the kage summit the guards are kind of useless they don't actually do anything in terms of helping so to answer this and a what if a mosh pit of the conference room situation were to happen there's the argument of her getting overwhelmed and not being able to keep track of the opponents but she does have the sharingan precog and she does have the mongekyo sharingan i know i haven't brought that up in a while so she has the ability to easily track hundreds of different things very precise and even see their trajectory and whatnot so there's no case she does get overwhelmed in a power sense but this causes a whole issue that i want to bring up which is chakra as of now there's no indication of how much chakra sarda has or what her supply is if it's greater than sasuke's was at the time or if it's overall less there's just not enough information currently out there on that and we do see her toggle on and off her sharingan a lot during battle which could be taken as her trying to conserve chakra so it's honestly up in the air if she has enough chakra to even endure all of these fights back to back in such a rapid succession so if you believe she doesn't that's up to you if you think she does all right cool we can continue but for the sake of the video let's just pretend she gets help from zetsu or karin of restoring her chakra so she's not out or we could just say that she isn't running out of chakra lastly is donzo on the bridge which in all honesty is a time game sarda has been shown to be a very tactile fighter and she likes to observe what goes on and very smart all things that are shown in the boro fight with her figuring out not only the virus thing he had going on but also figuring out where his core is and how it's moved with the hand signs so there's no doubt in my mind after running a chidori through donzo's heart a couple times that she would stop and think you know this guy makes a hand sign that all of a sudden he's invincible and after a minute an eye closes that's not far-fetched at all and we also know that she has got Jutsu, so it's highly probable that she just does the same thing Sasuke did with making him believe an eye is still open and that's how she wins. 
there is quite literally no case I can see be made or any outcome where she does lose a single fight against Donzo. Throughout this video, I really entertained the idea of these fights and got into the matchups as if they were worthy talking points and not complete blowouts, but from what's been seen from Sarda, she's for multiple reasons far superior to any character talked about in this video, and even most Shippuden characters as well. If this wasn't a video and I just had to give an answer to these matchups or fights, it's really easy to say she'll outright blitz every character here and they have no chance of winning, so there's the reason for me actually getting in depth of any sort on these fights. I plan on making a follow up video on Sarda versus a lot of the situations or people in Shippuden like Sarda versus the Akatsuki, Sarda versus the Shinobi Alliance, all of that. So if that sounds good to you or you like my content, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it greatly and have a good day.